Hi, I'm Carlo Midione, and this is Carlo Cooks Italian. Today, we'll make dishes to dress up any party table. We'll make crepes for a wonderful dish called scripelli in buze, or cheese crepes in broth. Then, costolettini d'agnello alla calabrese, Calabrian-style lamb chops, an opulent way to present delicious food. And for dessert, coviglia di caffè, a classic frozen treat. Venite, cucinare con me. Come cook with me. I'm Carlo Cooks Italian. Welcome to my kitchen. Our first recipe is scrippelli in buze, or cheese crepes in broth from Abruzzo. This is probably called the signature dish of Abruzzo because you can't go anywhere without getting it. It's absolutely delicious. It makes a terrific first course because it's light, it's very flavorful, and it's really simple. You'll see how. We're going to start a batter, and I've got one right over here that I'm going to show you how I put together in this bowl. Um, you can use a nice, it should be a nice big bowl so that you can sort of slosh things around. I have five eggs and I beat them just till they're slightly frothy like this. And then I'm going to put in my milk. I'm using <clears throat> one and a quarter cups of milk. I use whole milk for this. It's the best thing to use. And then I calls for a quarter pinch of salt, my recipe does. But you know, I'm an old experienced cook, so I just kind of measure it like that. And that's good enough. Then I have in parsley. This is Italian parsley chopped up, sort of fine like that. That's all it takes. And then this is grated pecorino cheese. Now this is a very critical element to the dish. It brings all of the flavor to it. And it's quite a bit, but that's what the essence of this crepe is. So that's in for my flavoring. Now I'm gonna put in the flour, which is about four tablespoons of flour. And uh, this adds gluten because when you kind of work it like this, it's going to get a little bit stretchy and it's gonna to help to hold this batter together. Then we need um, here some nutmeg. I love my little tin because it's got a nutmeg holder here, and I always like the fresh stuff. So I'm going to put about three or four big scrapings in there, and that's all I need to do with that one. Now, my batter is made, and there's nothing more I need to do except let it rest for about 20 minutes to let the gluten sort of begin to form up a little bit. The consistency should be like heavy cream, and actually you can make this early in the day and put it in your refrigerator. It doesn't... Uh, really matter, just that it wants to rest and not get too glutinous. I've got, um, and by the way, if that gets too thick, you can add a little tiny bit of water to it, or if it's too thin, if it just spreads all over, add a bit of flour and re-whip it. Now, I've got a crepe pan going here. Actually, this is an omelet pan, and you can use either one. If you get the right size pan, this is a six inch, this will be great, because it'll be sort of determine your crepe. You can use a bigger pan, but just be sure that when you ladle it in, you kind of define the amount you want. Now, I don't want this too hot, and I don't want it too cold, but I do want to brush it with a little tiny bit of fat, because it needs it. This happens to be lard. You can use olive oil, but I always use lard, because that's characteristic of what I do. And then, uh, I'm going to make my first crepe here, and usually the first one is a kind of a throwaway, but, you know, it, um, it doesn't matter if you have luck and it comes out real good the first time, you're, you're okay. The reason it's sort of a throwaway is you don't know how fast the pan's going to heat up or the crepe's going to cook or whether it's even going to work. You know, these can be tricky sometimes, but I hope not. Now this one, I'm going to check for doneness. I'm going to start coming here around the edge to check for some color and just use a rubber spatula here. I can see it's getting too hot. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go around the edge here and I'm going to take this. And this one is too dark, but at least gives you an idea. It's okay if it's that dark. It's not going to hurt anything. And then it just cooks like two or three seconds on this other side. And bingo, it's all ready to go into our dish. Now, there it is. I'm not going to use that one because I have one that's a little prettier over there that I made. You can make these ahead. And if you do, just put the wax paper between each one and put it in your refrigerator until you're going to use them. Or you can even freeze them that way. Just wrap them up real good. And our flavoring is more pecorino cheese I'm going to put about a tablespoon on, or maybe a little less than a tablespoon, but you want to cover it really nicely like this. 
and then you want to roll it up like a cigar. Okay, now here we go. Look how nice this is. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And it can be tight or a little loose, but there you go. Nice. You can make all these up earlier in the day if you want to. It doesn't make a real bit of difference. Over here I have some stock. And um, this is chicken stock, just made with onion, celery, and carrot. And it's very tasty. And what you really want to be sure that you do is that you don't boil it so it goes over the edge, but it wants to be really hot. Now, when you go to serve this dish, it's going to be really easy to do because you um, have to have a warm bowl. I've got one over here. And even though it's not so warm that I can't handle it, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to hold this over here and put two of my scripelli in here, just like this, just maybe near the center of the plate is good. And then I'm going to ladle on my broth. Now, you know, sometimes when I really want a very elegant but a rather light lunch, I will do these and serve them up, and they're really quite wonderful. And as a first course, they're absolutely stunning, I think. Now, that looks good to me. I'm going to put these right over here and show you how nice and how pretty that dish is. Now, you know, I've chosen a dish that's really nice. I like this one. It had a rooster in it, and it's got some nice designs around here because I don't like to garnish things. And so if I have a beautiful plate like this one, then I don't have to really worry about it. I just figure that that's going to take care of it all for me. And I like to pay attention to the food in the dish. So warm plate, delicious food, and you've got it going. Now, when you want to make your scripelli and buze, you're going to need five large eggs, one and a quarter cups of whole milk, a quarter teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of finely chopped parsley, three quarter cup of grated pecorino cheese, and some extra for filling the crepes, four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, three scrapings of fresh nutmeg, lard for greasing the crepe pan, and two quarts of your favorite homemade chicken broth. I like to bring the scrupelli to the table in hot dishes and my hot broth in a big tureen and then serve each person individually. But you can dish it out in the kitchen. Just make sure that it reaches your guests while it's still real nice and piping hot. That's important. You can make these crepes ahead of time and store them in the freezer to use for a simple meal or simple snack, anything you like. Next, though, I'm going to show you Costalettini d'Agnello alla Calabrese, lamb chops, Calabrian style. Costalettini d'Agnello alla Calabrese, or lamb chops, Calabrian style, is a fun, colorful entree. These lamb chops are made with the long bone left in, so they look really elegant and they taste so good. They're great for parties and really rather easy to make. Let me show you. I'm going to make a half of this recipe and I'll give you the proportions for the full recipe in just a little while. You need uh, rib lamb chops like these with the long bone left in. And um, I got these from the butcher. They looked like this when I got them. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to pound them out. Now, if, um, if the butcher wants to give you the bones a little longer, go ahead and take them because they're kind of fun like that. And then if you want to pick them up with your fingers at a barbecue or whatever, you can, you can do that. Now, I'm going to use two pieces of paper like this and partly to keep my counter clean, but that's not the real reason. The other reason is that things pound out better like this when you have two pieces of paper because the meat doesn't get stuck on the wood. So I'm going to make a little noise here. So here we go to flatten them out. There, that's done. Isn't that neat? Now that doesn't take long and you can do these, you know, like the morning that you're going to want to serve this dish. See there? Nothing to it. Now, the lamb chops want to brown in extra virgin olive oil, and you want to make them rare. And these, you know, sometimes they come a little thinner than this, sometimes a little thicker. So just be sure that whatever you do, that they're, they're rare. And I'm testing my pan by putting it near my face to see what the heat is like. And I'm going to put in a nice amount of extra virgin olive oil because this brings taste, but it's also the way they want to get cooked up. Then I'm also going to put some salt. I always use sea salt because I think that flavor is terrific and pepper on these because that's always good and I always like a lot of pepper so you can put as much as you want on there. Now these, I just want to be sure that my oil is, uh, that looks like it's going to work. Yep, it's going to work. If it's not hot enough, these tend to stick a little bit. So I'm just going to put these in and then I'm going to go and make some vegetables for us but I'm going to keep an eye on these by coming back and forth. Huh? And just don't try to move them now because they'll stick to the pan. So, 
I've got some pepper over here. This is a bell pepper that I just put on the gas oven, or the gas burner, rather, but you can do it in the oven, uh, in the broiler, if you want, and just uh, peel it and clean it, take all the seeds and the core out of it, and then you cut them up in pieces like this. They could be a little bit bigger if you want, but these have to be flavored up, and I use a nice amount of garlic here. I've got a couple of nice small cloves of garlic, which I cut up, and with these, I'm going to add a little bit of um, extra virgin olive oil, because that's a terrific flavor, and I don't want to get too much in there, just some, and then some lemon juice, because this is a very good combination, lemon juice and olive oil. And I use my hand here to squeeze because it holds back all the seeds. See, and I've got lemon juice and no seeds. It's good for you. So these I just mix up and leave to marinate for a little while. It doesn't matter how long they marinate, but it should be for a few minutes anyhow. Now, I'm gonna check my lamb. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. Turn these over. Two days easy. Okay. Let those go. Here's my artichoke. I use baby artichokes for this because it's the best thing. You can eat the whole thing up, including the choke on the inside. And when you peel these, you want to get uh, all of the green off as much as you can and then quickly trim the stem over here so that you have all this nice stem and then trim the top off. So what you have here is a very beautiful little baby artichoke and then it's ready to be put into acidulated water so that it doesn't turn black. And I'll just add this to these other ones that I have over here. Now, I've got some water in my pan so I'm gonna reach in and take these out and add them to my pan with a little bit of lemon. Put a couple of pieces of lemon in here. Maybe one piece is enough. A little pepper, a little salt, and a little bit of olive oil. Then these are gonna simmer for about 10 minutes until they're just tender. And then when they're tender, I'm gonna mix them with some other vegetables that's gonna complete our dish. Now I just wanna get these artichokes that I've already cooked and have cooled over here, and we'll go and assemble the rest of our dish. Okay. Over here, I have some mushrooms that I've sauteed in extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna add these to my bowl. This was just done with a little bit of lemon juice on it just to give them some flavor. I'm gonna add my peppers, because this is gonna make a real nice combination of ingredients over here, very tasty. And then um, I have capers. I'm just gonna mix these in. You could do these all separate and arrange them on a platter, you know, however you like. But I sort of like to do it this way too, because then it gives me something that I can really enjoy looking at. Now I'm gonna put these on my platter. I use a really nice platter like this because this is very pretty and it's the way to go. I'm just gonna put these all in one heap over here because you'll see why in a minute. Put them like this, nice. Then my lamb chops go on just like this. This is a wonderful dish and so colorful. Now, when you want to make lamb chops Calabrian style, you're going to need two red or green bell peppers, a clove of garlic, about a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, two lemons, eight baby artichokes, one teaspoon of salt to taste, pepper to taste, half a pound of mushrooms, eight rib lamb chops with the long bone left in, two tablespoons of capers, and eight anchovy fillets. I like to make these for big parties because I can prepare a heated serving platter with the vegetables ahead of time so that at party time, all that's left to do is to cook the lamb chops. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple, inexpensive, and delicious dessert, coviglia di caffè, or coffee coviglia. The egg and cream base of this recipe is called coviglia only in Naples. To the rest of the world, it's known as semifreddo. It can be made in a variety of delicious flavors. Today, I'm gonna to make it with coffee. Now, this is simple, but here's what you have to do. You take four large egg yolks and you beat them with a half a cup of granulated sugar until it's really tripled in volume and looks like this. This is called the ribbon stage, you see? And you can make uh, your initials or you can make little designs and then you know 
that that's the right consistency. If you get this too loose, when it freezes, um, it's going to be like a block of ice, and you don't really want that. And if it's a little too firm, it's okay because it'll hold up. Now, in this gorgeous little chicken pitcher, which I love, I've got my cold espresso coffee. Isn't that cute? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I've got to get one of these for my house. I've got them all over the place, but I need two or three of them so that I can always have my cream when I want it poured out of here. Now, I just want to fold this together and make as nice and smooth a mixture as I can. And this takes a little bit of folding, and it kind of breaks up, and just mix it. Don't be too afraid to do this. This um, sometimes gets a little bit liquid, and it would be nicer if it would be a little firmer than this, but, you know, that's the way life is. So I'm going to add it to my um, cream here. I've got one cup of heavy whipping cream that's been whipped until it's really sort of um, almost too stiff. You know, you might, if this was any warmer, you might <laughs> say that it would turn into butter, so you have to kind of be careful. But anyhow, I want to fold this together and try to make this into a kind of a smooth and very luscious looking cream. Now, ordinarily, when you fold like this, the way I'm doing, see, I'm ro rotating the bowl and I'm cutting through like this, you um, should be able to do this in 12 strokes. I wasn't counting, but I bet it's more like 16. But you know, nobody is looking, so just do it and it'll be fine. If there's a few lumps like this, don't worry, because we're going to fold a little bit more. Over here, I've got three egg whites that were beaten until they were stiff. And when you use an electric mixer that doesn't have a copper bowl, you might want to add a pinch of salt because that helps to kind of stabilize them and gives them a nice uh, glossy finish. So anyhow, I'm going to get these all together here. And then this looks kind of rough, but if you just keep going at this and just kind of move it along here, then you'll be done. And when you are finished with this action, and this is going to go straight into the freezer, and it would be best if this freezes completely overnight at least. And you can make this a week ahead of time. You know, just put uh, clear wrap over it or something and let it stay in the freezer. Now, I think this is pretty good. There, I think that's nice like that. Now, I'm just going to clean the edges here, and this whole thing could go right into the freezer, minus your mixer. If you can't afford a $4,000 espresso machine to make this Covilia, you ought to consider these stovetop models. They're really terrific. For instance, this little goodie over here, this is like a Rube Goldberg. You put, you put water in here by loosening this up, and then the water, when it boils on your stovetop over here, goes through this little chamber. Here it's loaded with coffee, and it drips down. And then when it's all done, you have this little pot you can take out. See here? Isn't that neat? Then you have, you're ready to go with your coffee. Over here, we have, this is my wife Lisa's little coffee pot. She's had this for many, many, many years. And it's got a little screen on top of it so that when you put water in the bottom, coffee in the chamber in the middle here, and then the water boils up through, which is how these work, it doesn't splatter all over the place. This kind of contains it. That's a neat item. This one over here works the same way, but this came from my cousin Conchettina in Sicily. And when I was there many, many years ago, I saw this. It's before steel was right on the market and so readily available. And I eyed this, and I said, gee, I haven't seen one of those before. And she said, it's yours. When, you know, when you go to Italy and you admire something, they, you end up getting it. So on my next trip, I'm looking at Ferraris, let me tell you. Over here, I have some interesting ice cream scoops. When you want to serve up, you can use a variety. Some of these with a mechanical thing in them is kind of nice. Or this is a big one here. But don't neglect this kind of spoon or scoop types, and don't forget that you also have a nice tablespoon type over here. I think uh, these are handy to have, and it's nice to be able to just choose whatever you want. Well, this Covilia has been frozen, and this is the easy part here. Now, remember that in Italy, you know, Covilia, it's a form of ice cream. The emphasis is on cream and not on ice. These want to be creamy, even if you are uh, getting this straight out of the freezer. Be sure that you let it warm up just a little bit because otherwise it's just like a rock and it's not nearly as nice as it would be if you get it a little tiny bit creamy so that you can easily eat it with a spoon. And then from here, there, now that's, maybe let's skip one more here because we want to be a little bit generous. Then from here we just finish it off by putting on some nice powdered espresso coffee. This is a coffee bean that's been all ground up. And then maybe a couple of nice little beans here because they're wonderful and crunchy and they're a great thing to eat just as a snack. To make this dessert, 
you're going to need four large egg yolks, half a cup of granulated sugar, three large egg whites, one cup of heavy whipping cream, a quarter cup of very strong cold espresso, and six espresso beans. All of these recipes are good for a large party because so much can be prepared beforehand, leaving you free to enjoy your company. There are so many ways to use crepes, but I'm particularly fond of the scripelli imbuse. The flavor is really wonderful. Party guests always love these lamb chops, costolettini Daniello alla calabrese. They look fun and they taste great. And the coviglia di caffè is a delicious alternative to heavy ice creams. For those of you who'd like to try wine, you might want a red like this Avellano from Master Berardino. It's perfect with our cheese crepes and lamb chops because it's not too heavy and it has a crisp, clean flavor. With the coffee coviglia, you might try to choose this Marsala Superiore de Bartoli. This is an extremely high quality Marsala that tastes of wood, nuts and spices, and it can age for decades. This one is 20 years old. Otherwise, go for more coffee flavor and have a good espresso with the coviglia. Well, that's it for now in Bocalupo.